Samantha Kalari finally escaped the perverted clutch of her policeman father. I was able to start disassociating him as my father and seeing him for the monster that he really is. Samantha was soon self-destructing with alcohol and drugs, cutting herself and choosing one rotten abusive boyfriend after the other. And then came Greg Kalari. At what point did you learn she had a lot of trauma associated with her past? Um, our first date. Single, stable father of three employed in the food industry meets tormented, abused victim of vile incest all alone in the world. Bring it on. You knew? Yes, absolutely. And she met your children? Yes. And they loved her? Absolutely. He's been here every night and that I've had sleepless nights and night terrors and he's been through every breakdown. Greg took care of Samantha and took care of business, challenging the parental pariah who was still hiding safely behind his badge. At what point did you say, I'm going to confront this man? I knew I was going to immediately. The first time was at his off-duty police job where he was guarding some factory. I'm going after dark on some dark deserted road. Against a man with a gun. Against a police officer in his uniform in his car, um, you know, with, with a gun. Greg says Jackman played down the abuse. He said he's very sorry and he hopes that we can all move past this and someday he would like to be a good grandfather for my children. It's unbelievable that this was allowed to happen in the first place, let alone stopped. Greg knew Samantha would never heal until Jackman was exposed and held accountable. At the age of 25 and with Greg's encouragement, Samantha made a courageous and life-altering decision. I will not be silenced any longer and I will not rest until everyone is held accountable. It became her mission. Samantha would take no prisoners. She started by confronting Jackman's family. My grandfather told me that he hoped that I didn't go forward because Sean might lose his pension. His sister told me she couldn't support me because it just ruined her perfect little world. Um, and his mother was beside herself. Now even more motivated, Samantha took a huge chance and paid a visit to her father's cousin in the FBI. Finally, someone who didn't turn his back on her. I said, you know, I'm, I'm afraid of going forward. And he told me he knew exactly who to send me to so that it would be taken care of and it would not be swept under the rug. Enter the Louisville Metro Crimes Against Children Unit. This deeply wounded young woman was welcomed with open arms. There was this overwhelming sense of relief that it was finally in the hands of someone who was capable of helping me. As much as they believed her, detectives needed a winnable case. Jackman was a pillar of the police community. He had 23 years of zero disciplinary action. And stacks of commendations for exemplary work, keeping the community safe, running the department's elite Viper unit. Her safety in her life was definitely in danger had we not you know, gotten him and arrested him as soon. Without evidence, you can't really charge anyone for something. Yeah, just he because said I she said, said so. Said. Especially not against a police officer, especially one of the reputation that my father had. Detectives had a plan for Samantha, but it would require nerves of steel and unflinching focus. Samantha, you understand the phone call you're about to place is going to be recorded? Yes. This young, terrified, but determined victim calls her abuser. Hello? Hey, are you back to your room? To try and lure him into a confessional trap. You dive your ducks in row. Yes. I was really hesitant because I normally did not speak to my dad a whole lot on the phone. Can I ask you about what I remember? Um, yeah. Samantha recounts her earliest memory. I remember coming downstairs to you and mom rubbing lotion on her and being encouraged to, to join in. Right. But he came down and, and you were you were like, you know, rub some on my back or whatever. And I, I don't think that you just I remember correctly. She remembered you getting in the shower with me in Florida in front of her. I, I don't remember that. Right out of the sex offender playbook, Jackman blames the victim or conveniently suffers from memory lapse. I was very skeptical. I didn't believe that it would work. 
and um, I was very nervous as well because I was scared that my father would catch on to what was happening. But the poster boy for stellar police work didn't have a clue. Samantha pressed on. I'm tired of feeling scared. I feel wrong. I, I can't be intimate in my relationship because every time Greg touches me, I, I see your face. I can't do the, the things that I should be doing as a mother. I can't, I, I can't put diapers on my children because I feel uncomfortable. I can't give them baths. Like I, I feel sick all the time. I was uh, in, a, in a very sick, perverted state of mind at that time. I and then there's, there, there, there truly isn't, isn't like a, I can say this, this, and this, and you're like, oh, okay, but well, that makes sense, because it, it doesn't make sense. Finally, Samantha begins to loosen her father's reins of denial. I'm so confused how we went from, from you trying to educate me to you performing oral sex on me, Dad. Well, I, I, I told you, I, I don't really have any type of a logical why. Sean Jackman's own words were evidence pay dirt. Samantha was actually building a case against her own father. He told me that he had his wires crossed because he was watching pornography. I got tied up in stupid internet porn crap, which wasn't necessarily porn, but it was you know, about nudism and naturism and I guess the, the, you know, the perversion in my head about stuff of thought that I was going to, you know, that I was teaching it. You wouldn't try to have sex with boys, whatever. Sean Jackman had dug his own grave and filled it with evidence. You're not supposed to be sexual with your daughter. No, you're not. Thanks to Samantha, Louisville police had a confession and a case. At that moment, after you had the recording, at the end of the conversation, you looked up at those two detectives, and what did they say? The female detective, uh, she was bewildered. She had never experienced someone so proud to speak about abusing someone before and 30 long painful minutes on the phone in front of two detectives who I barely knew. He spoke as if it was talking about a football game. Coming up, Samantha's crusade against her own father stuns a Kentucky courtroom and enrages his family. If I had one thing I could say to Sean right now. It's that I love you and I hate you. And despite everything you've done to me, all I want is for my dad to take me into his arms and make this all go away. And what will happen to the man who protected and served the community, but desecrated the soul of his own daughter? As to count 10 in the indictment, sodomy in the third degree, how do you plead not guilty or guilty? been waiting, you know, a little while for this. And I'm do you have anything to say no. like and to Samantha? Any apologies? Oh, okay. Anything? 